Hey, hey, Father Michael here. First John, chapter 3, verse 1. See what love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called children of God. As a young boy, I had a lot of anxiety. <clears throat> and I was painfully shy. I know no one believes that, but, but it really was the case. Um, always feeling like I didn't quite fit in with anybody. Always felt painfully unique and, and miserable, really, for being weird. Always feeling like I was the wrong, you know, puzzle piece trying to fit into a jigsaw puzzle where I didn't even belong, uh, you know, in the box with the other pieces. I was bright, certainly, but I was not driven to, you know, work hard to achieve good grades, uh, something that every single teacher I ever had put on my damn report cards. I had friends that I hung out with quite often and even though I liked being active and doing things, you know, not just sitting around reading books, although I also like that, I didn't understand this weird passion that most of my male peers felt about watching football. What's to get excited about watching people you don't even know? <laughs> I, I still don't get it. I, I don't get it. So I felt weird. What don't I get? My elementary school classes were small. I went to a small Catholic school. So, you know, 21, 22 kids at the most per class. So as an artistic, creative, musical kind of lad, uh, man, I always stood out as, again, terminally different. At least that's how I felt. I also liked going to mass every morning before school. <clears throat> I loved it. And, uh, you know, back in the day, that was just part of the drill. And then it became optional. And I was one of like maybe three kids who continued to go to daily mass, uh, which also brought me an immediate blessing from God because math was the first class of the day and that meant I got to miss 45 minutes of an hour of math. Woohoo, God is good. <laughs> Middle school, which we used to call junior high back in the day, that was even worse when it came to not fitting in. High school, of course, came after that, which was a little bit better because at least, you know, the music geeks and uh, the artistic nerds and uh, the drama freaks, uh, at least, you know, we found each other and we got an instant peer group with which to interact and hang out. Those things really were my salvation in those years, especially as my situation at home got worse and worse, more violent, daily abuse, etc. And no one knew because I couldn't tell. Many, many years later, I went to my first uh, high school reunion and in interacting with some of the people uh, from those years, I learned something that really Every single one of us was feeling that way. It's just that some of us hid it better than others. When I became a teacher, my second career, teaching middle school and then high school uh, over a 15 year period, in some ways, I felt like I was given a chance that I had missed when I was in school myself. I was going to be there for the ones just like me who felt awkward and unappreciated and judged and all of that because that's just part of the game. And 
sometimes, to be honest, teachers behind the scenes say some pretty shitty things about students behind their backs. There's a lot of judgment there. So in some ways, going back, you know, into middle school and high school uh, was almost a PTSD moment because it was like, oh, they even, these schools even smell the same. <laughs> it was not a pleasant experience on some levels. But I remembered all too clearly what it felt like to be the awkward kid in the school and how clumsy it was to be a boy whose body was growing so rapidly that, you know, coordination of muscles just wasn't even a thing for a minute. We had to wait, wait for that to kind of catch up uh, a little bit later. And remembering how desperately young people just want to find their groove, find their group and fit in. So I did what I had always wanted my teachers to do. I was especially kind and affirming to the ones that I sensed were struggling the most, the nerdy ones, the awkward ones, the ones who needed some kind of positive affirmation in their life, because I knew all too well how it was not to have those things, right? To carry the weight of the world uh, on my shoulders and to feel like I couldn't trust anyone to really say what was going on. So I made the assumption, correctly, as it turned out, that there certainly were many of my own students who were doing the same thing that I had done, trying to put on a brave face, trying to face the world, trying to fit in, just trying to make it through another day without completely losing it. I have taught students who were homeless, some of them living in their vehicles with their alcoholic parents. I had an autistic student living in a tent without heat, without electricity, with his mentally ill father who was off his medications. I've had students who were raped, sexually abused by adults. I've had students who, many students, who were being raised by grandparents and other people in their lives because their millennial parents woke up one day and said, you know what, this parenting thing is some bullshit. It is work. We aren't, we didn't sign up for this. We were just gonna have sex and make babies. We're done dropped the kids off at grandma's house and took off. A lot of kids in that situation. It was very eye-opening, heartbreaking oftentimes, but I simply did what I could do. When they were in the safety bubble of school for those eight hours a day, I just tried to be their person that they could talk to and I, you know, kids respected that. They would stay after school, many of them, to talk to me, pour out their stories. And sometimes I had to warn them, look, if you're gonna tell me what I think you're gonna tell me, I have to report some things. So just be mindful of that. Sometimes they did proceed and I had to, I had to follow through. But in every case, I just tried to be that safe person for them. It's kind of been a thread running through my life as I look back over all the work that I've tried to do, including, you know, when I finally decided to give in um, to the call to be a priest 15 years ago. I had the same idea in mind, really. I was going to reach out to those who felt disenfranchised and, uh, and judged and like they weren't welcome in the larger 
Catholic Christian world, the divorced people, the divorced and remarried people in particular, uh, the GLBTQ plus community, and even just plain old well-educated Catholics who were more knowledgeable in current theology than even the Roman Catholic bishops and clergy are. That's a hard place to be. There was a time, you know, in the church, historically, when the bishops were the most well-educated people on the planet. Well, that's the reverse is true now. It's all institutional um, ultramontanism, if you will. It's, it's guarding, guarding the deposit of faith, as they call it. Like it's just a, a lump of gold bullion in the yard. And that's all we have to do is just keep that treasure, you know, pure and untainted by liberal thinking and all of this. I also tried to reach out to drug addicts and alcoholics and sex workers and every other kind of outcast who, for whatever reason, simply was not welcome in the churches where they had been going. I'm still on that page. So regardless of our age, I think humans want the basic, the basics for this life, really. We want the same things. We just want to be loved with no strings attached. We just want to be honored and respected for, for who we really are without any judgment, without having to conform to some, you know, intellectual set of rules or belief systems or whatever. We just want to be good enough the way we are. Through all of my own struggles to fit in, I came to understand that I have always fit in perfectly with God's idea of what family looks like. First John 3, 1, see what love the Father has for us in calling us children of God. That's the one thread of truth that I continue to hold on to. Unlike the various peer groups in elementary school and middle school and high school, we don't have to wear the right clothes. We don't have to wear $300 kicks. We don't have to live in the right neighborhood. Our dads uh, don't need to have, you know, uh, six-figure salaries and all of that. We don't have to have certain skills or aspirations or goals or any of that. We just need to be open to love. It's so crazy simple. Be open to love. To letting love in. Let God love us as we are that we might in turn love God and love other people to show that we do in fact love God. Over the years, I've also come to know that this larger family of God, which includes every human on the planet, by the way, it's not just Catholics, it's not just Christians. Over the years, I've realized that the family, like me, is also looking for love. And so it's incumbent upon me to step up and do some loving in return. The same kind of love and acceptance that I crave for myself, I need to start giving away to others because we're all on the same page, really. There are a lot of hurting people in this world a lot of people who have been rejected and turned away. I got in a conversation just last night with someone that I met for the first time about his own spiritual journey through the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church where he felt, you know, completely 
alien coming up as a child and then moving into, you know, a more congregational community to the point now where he's not really doing anything because he's just not sure if any of it's worth his time. I didn't try to pressure him to come my way. I just told him, you know what, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where we're from. It doesn't matter how we've been hurt. It doesn't matter how much money we have. It doesn't matter what our life uh, looks like from the outside. Because God loves us. God has a place for us. It's not about doctrine. It's not about man-made rules. It's not about polity or any of that tomfoolery. It's about a simple willingness to allow ourselves to being loved. And in allowing ourselves to be loved, we find that we are actually agents of that divine love and we can make a difference in this crazy ass world. Pray with me. Mighty loving God, Father, Mother, we thank you in this moment for the gift of life and mostly for the gift of your love, which has called us into being in this moment. Help us today to celebrate the miracle of who we are, of who you have made us to be. Help us to focus on the one thing that matters, love. And let all of our lesser anxieties and worries slip away. Help us to be open to a relationship with you and to find a way to celebrate our own uniqueness and our place in your diverse family. Amen. And now may the God of belonging and unconditional love be with you and all those you love and preserve all those in Ukraine the blessing of our mighty gracious God Otsa Isinu Isvatomo Duhu. Amen. Dobobachinya. Have a blessed day.